Hey everyone, Nathan Stubblefield Coil Build. This is a culmination of about 10 months worth of work, which I would deem a success in generating some half decent voltage out of the coil. There was one line in Nathan Stubblefield's patent that caught me. I just want to read it to you, then you will understand the construction of the coil. And it will, of course, be understood that there may be any number of separate coils or layers of the wires according to the required size and capacity of the battery. Well, I took separate coils or layers as separate cells. So when I wound the battery, each individual layer of windings is its own individual isolated cell. I also ensured that when I wound the coil that the wires were stacked in this configuration on top of one another. So the plan is number eight gauge, seven strand bare copper wire. I found a woven polyester sleeve that I've put over roughly 250 feet of wire here. That'll act as my insulator. I'm not a purist. I don't need to use the cotton. I just need a good insulator in there. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> and 250 feet of 3 16 galvanized cable. That's going to substitute for the iron wire. I look at the difference in potential between the metals and obviously the zinc and the copper have a higher difference in potential. Should get a little bit more voltage out of this thing. That's the idea. I've installed a 3 16 locking collar. It's got a small set screw in there and that's what I'm going to be using to secure the cables and the wire in the ends of my spool. The iron core, inch and a half diameter, soft iron, 12 inches long. I've drilled and tapped a 3 8 coarse thread in either end to attach my spool plates and I've also installed two dowel pins on either end to ensure that the end plates or my end spools don't twist while I'm winding my coil. I'm also going to cover the iron core with inch and a half shrink wrap. I don't want it to rust on the inside and I just want to protect it from possibly grounding out against the cable or the copper. Now my discs. I have two 11 and a half inch plexiglass discs. They're quarter inch in diameter or quarter inch thick. So what I've done is they're both identical. They're a mirror image of each other. So what I've done is is I've gone in and I have 16 pairs of holes around the outside and that's where I'll be terminating the wire ends coming out of either end. I've drilled the holes on a 45 degree angle to make it easier to feed the the copper and the cable through that cup or that cable does not like to bend at a 90 degree angle. I also have drilled additional smaller holes in here which I'm going to use to inject water into each individual cell of my battery. That way I can control how much water is in, e in each individual cell and try to take advantage of generating as much voltage as I possibly can. So the plan is iron core, shrink wrap, I'm going to be wrapping it in 100% terry cloth. I'll be doing a 50% overlap on the terry cloth to give me a bit of a build up there to hold some moisture and also act, uh, act as some insulation. Now, when it came to the terry cloth, I figured a coil this size or cotton, if I used all my t-shirts for it, it wouldn't have anything to wear. So I went to the fabric store and there it was, cotton batting. I figured, oh, nice, strong, thick stuff. Same stuff they put inside quilts or whatever. Should wick absorb water like crazy? Absolutely not. This has been in here for 24 hours now. The cotton batting, 100% dry. I figured give it a wash. Let's see what happens. There it is, still dry. Try a piece of felt. Dry. 
100% cotton. Dry, 100% cotton, moist, 100% terry cloth cotton, soak and wet. So that's why I've decided to go with the, with the terry cloth as my cotton insulator. So the plan is gonna be initially shrink wrap the core, wrap it in a layer of terry cloth, copper cable, one end to the other. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna wrap it in an additional layer of the terry cloth. And then from my old airplane days, shrink wrap material, heat activated adhesive on the back of it. So I will be covering one coil with the shrink wrap. I found some nice silicone that really sticks to this well. So the idea will be is once I'm wound, I will take it and I'll use a little bit of silicone, attach the shrink wrap to the end of my spools and build individual coil layers as I go. Now I do have a winding jig that I've built because this is gonna be a bit of a tricky one to build. I'm initially gonna build 10 layers, but I do have the option for more. So what I, what I have is I've built this and this is going to suit this will basically support the the spool and this is going to allow me to rest the the wire and the cable on this as I try to pull it tight. Okay, spool is assembled. Iron core has been shrink wrapped. A little bit of silicone on each end just to ensure a good watertight seal. I took 400 grit sandpaper to the inside of the discs just to allow the silicone to stick a little bit better. This coil is going to have 64 windings on it. I know Nathan Stubblefield had mentioned 100 on his original one, but he also did say in his patent that you can deviate from the original design or something to that effect without compromising the principle of the coil, good enough. Um, the wire itself, 0.1875 inches in diameter, that's my 3 16 cable. Now I know on the AWG chart, it shows that eight gauge wire is a little bit smaller in diameter, but that's for a solid core wire. This wire being stranded seems to have a little bit larger of a diameter to it plus the polyester sleeve that I'm sliding over the top of it has a wall thickness of 20 thousandths of an inch. So it gets me to within about 10 thousandths of an inch of the cable, close enough. First coil, roughly 15 feet of wire and cable. By the time I hit coil 10, I should be around 58 feet of wire and cable for a total of around 370 feet. I've allotted 285 thousandths of an inch for each individual cell that I'm going to build. The wire is 0.1875, around 100 thousandths of an inch in cotton. A little bit of fudge factor there as far as the tension in the wire, or the, uh, how much cotton I decide to put on there. I should be able to keep it fairly close so that everything lines up with my holes. Inch and a half washer backup washer, lock washer, flange nut. I ran a die down the, the shank of the, the bolt. These are two three inch long bolts. There's one inch into the core itself. Ran a die down the shank to allow me to put a self locking nut on either end of the spool. Finding J. Mm. Typical box store, big box store. 8 inch brackets, 2 inches wide. I cut a small slot in the top of each one. That's going to support my spool. This goes in like that. So what I've done is, is I've left a small gap in between the self-locking nut and the head of the bolt. That's just going to help to control lateral movement of the spool when I wind it. This is just strictly a winding just jig. I do have a test bench that I'm going to put together for it later on. 
On this side, what I've done is I've left the self-locking nut on the outside of the bracket. That's going to allow me to take my 3 8 drive ratchet, slide it over top, drop it down in, and that now is my one-way clutch for when I go to wind. So I'll be able to hold on to the the cable wire and the, uh, the or the cable and the copper with one hand and rotate the spool with the other as I wind from left to right on this and hold it tight. What I have right here, just a piece of one and a quarter inch wide, one eighth thick piece of steel. Just bend it a couple of 90s, couple of quarter 20 bolts in on either end holding it tight. Sticky back felt material. That's what I'm going to be clamping the, the cable and the wire to. I don't want to damage any of the insulating material on the wire or deform it by squeezing it too tight. A couple of dowel pins just in on either side just controls how far that can move forward. As the diameter of the coil increases with the windings I can also tilt it back and if I need to I can just go in and lock it with a pair of locking pliers. I've taken a pair of C-clamp pliers, just tack welded a small piece of metal to it. Another piece of sticky back felt on there. The idea is, is as I wind, if I need to take a break or I'm at the end of a coil, I can just squeeze the, the two together and clamp it into place and uh, hopefully that's going to hold while I have to do any, anything to my coil.